What's up, everybody? This is Mason Plumley back with another interview. Um, today we have Chase Garrett, um, the founder of Icon Source, with us. Um, I met Chase back my rookie year, actually at my agency when he was running athlete marketing for Red Bull. So we had a good conversation then. We've since reconnected in Denver, and he has a really neat solution for athlete activate activation from the corporate side. And we're going to learn more about that today. So let's bring Chase on and learn more about Icon Source. Hey, Mason. What's up, Chase? Thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm excited. For sure. Um, so tell us, you know, we're going to introduce, we're going to play a little clip um, that, that shares your company with the viewers, but tell us um, a little bit about your background and when you first had the idea to start Icon Source. Yeah, I've been involved in sports for a long time, raced motocross most of my younger life, primarily involved in action sports, and then worked at Red Bull for about seven years in their athlete marketing department. And um, so I got a lot of pieces of sports marketing in my background. And I saw an opportunity to really evolve the space in how brands connect with athletes and uh, wanted to create a platform that was more inviting for new brands and, and people and brands without the connectivity of a large sports marketing organization. And so uh, developed Icon Source, which is a marketplace. Um, yeah, and launched it uh, to the public in September. So we're about, you know, six months old. Gotcha. Very cool. So why don't, um, let's run the video really quick so people can see the platform that you've developed, which yeah. I think is as well done as any I've seen. And um, then we'll continue the conversation. Great. travel, usage rights, category exclusivity, even help with protecting current sponsorship agreements. Then you send any athlete your opportunity directly from the app. The athlete's agent receives the message on the same simple app and can message back with any questions. Once you've smoothed out all the details, finalize the contract and send it. Icon Source handles all the payments, fees and accounting on the back end. The athlete and agent can sign it on the go. Busy schedules won't slow down the process. Now you have the tool to set yourself apart and make a significant impact in your world. Social media, digital, activations, endorsements, appearances, reach new audiences, create excitement for your business and drive revenue. Join our list of growing brands and discover the power of the right connections. Visit iconsource.com, download it on the App Store, or get it on Google Play. Okay, great. So being an athlete myself, I'll try not to throw my own opinion in too much, but let's, look at this from, let's break it down into three categories. Let's first talk about why as an athlete, I'm excited about this. Um, then from the engagement side, why the, um, the corporations or the small companies or whoever is excited about it. And then let's just talk about the overall business. So yeah. myself, you know, you tell me the feedback that you're getting from athletes and why they want to be on the platform and why this is a much needed solution. Yeah. I mean, um, athletes sacrifice so much their whole lives from a very young childhood and they're so dedicated and committed. Um, but there's a pretty short earning kind of window of, of how long you're able to monetize your efforts as an athlete and your influence over an audience. And so, um, I really wanted to evolve the landscape to invite more participants to, um, leverage sports and athletes because I felt like influencer marketing is very top of mind right now. Uh, and athlete marketing is kind of like the original influencer marketing that's been done. And you guys have such a dedicated following and a fan base that's committed to what you do because most athletes earn their revenue on the field. So they only partner with companies and brands that they really believe in, that they use the products, uh, 
And therefore, you know, it's going to be a lot better relationship for the brand longer term. And so I think uh, a platform like this allows athletes to really be able to connect with brands that resonate better with them because they can search based off your likes, interests, geographic location. So it just creates an easier entry point uh, without cluttering up like an Instagram direct message feed, um, you know, bogging down and any other channels that are just difficult to scale or manage. Gotcha. So to the consumers out there, I think Chase is saying that you're smart enough to realize Blake Griffin doesn't drive a Kia and yeah. other, you know, people don't actually use the, the companies that they promote and he's fostering authentic partnerships and relationships between these athletes and the brands. So, you know, to your point of, of athlete specific, I think it's neat that, um, that we can, you know, capture this earning potential. Um, what has the, uh, reception been for them? Because a lot of these guys, I see you have NFL, MLB, NBA players on there. Um, it seems like there's not a, a need to sign like, like a, an extreme sports athlete or an Olympic athlete. They, um, they have to, there's more of a, um, they live and die by their endorsements exactly endorsements are everything so what's yeah. the difference between those athletes and the the professional like the major leagues um athlete on your platform well i think um at the end of the day it's all about being able to connect with um brands and individuals that you're interested in so you may be a baseball player that's got a hundred million dollar contract but bow hunting is your favorite thing in the world. And if Vortex Optics wants to do a deal with you, that's so exciting. It's almost like makes you giddy. So, uh, and then that brand can really benefit by leveraging your name that you've created with your sport. Um, but really talking to a community that as an athlete, you may have a lot of credibility in. So, um, and then from like Olympic and action sports individuals, it really broadens uh, brands outside of those endemics. So your Nike, Adidas, Oakley's Red Bulls, they're going to find the talent that they want and they have those connections in that network. Um, but this can really help uh, you as an athlete leverage your, your local community, maybe your hometown bank, car dealerships, smaller brands, uh, new and upcoming startups that really want to partner with an athlete that just don't even know where to begin because that first step is so difficult and so intimidating uh, that most people just go another direction before even thinking about it. Gotcha. And who are who are some of the common company types that you see on the other end? Are you seeing like I know in the NBA right now, one of the big things is e-gaming yep. um, platforms like Twitch are always playing or paying guys to come on and play. Um, are you seeing more consumer goods? What's the, the flow on that side? Yeah, it's been mostly like younger consumer brands. Um, so we've seen a lot of in like the fitness community, because obviously working with an athlete, you get mm -hmm. a lot of credibility from your fitness tools versus just someone that's like a trainer. Uh, you guys are actually performing and putting your body to the test. Um, we've seen some B2B brands that want to control their voice to the end consumer, um, where they're typically reliant on kind of retail partners. And uh, it allows the brands to connect with an athlete directly to actually speak on their behalf. So we had a brand actually um, in their board meeting talk, talk about bringing on an athlete, uh, jumped on our platform, connected with an athlete and cinema contract in the meeting, which is just like such a wild experience because typically it's such a drawn out process, finding a lot of gatekeepers and middlemen to um, create those introductions. And it's just a, a very like timely process that we've tried to really uh, shrink that, that time. So as an athlete, if I'm on your platform and somebody approaches me, am I paying fees on top of fees if I have a marketing representative or agency representation or what's the, what's the cut look like? Cause I know athletes are sensitive to that. Yeah. So, um, we really wanted to like <clears throat> believe in the system. So there's no like sign up fees. There's no like monthly retainers that we charge. We really want to feel the marketplace by creating activity and, and really building value on both sides. Um, and we really built this as a tool for agents to leverage their portfolio to a broader base. So um, if you're a sports agent and you manage 20 athletes, um, you're so busy day to day with those current endemic deals, those current deals that you already have the network of. Uh, and so this allows Icon Source to essentially sell your portfolio to a much broader group of brands that it would be really difficult to cold call 
all day. And then we expedite the contract process. So it's a lot easier for those brands to understand, all right, what do I need to do to work with an athlete? How do I like build out a template? Um, so our fee structure uh, is we take 10% from the athlete. Uh, so if there's a deal that comes together, uh, you get 90% of essentially new money. And then that brand pays a small fee uh, on top of that agreed upon price. So uh, we, we've really tried to wait and take our piece once we've proven and brought value to both parties. Um, and, and we feel that that's kind of not been a roadblock for us so far. So you're trying to grow the market in a more succinct experience versus, you know, coming in on top of the agency's deals with like shoe brands and trading cards. If right. I understand, right? Exactly. Okay. We want to grow the pie kind of like, uh, you know, I, I like to reference what Uber did with the taxi space uh, instead of coming in and just kind of like taking their share, they really brought a whole lot more consumers to the, to the world of ride sharing. And so uh, we think with our use of technology and the ability to scale and the security with the communication and payment, that it's going to be intriguing for a lot wider group of brands to say, hey, I've never thought about this in the past, but launching this new product or bringing this athlete into this convention or to this meeting will really transform uh, our brand experience, either internally at their, their culture or to really launch something with credibility to a new consumer base uh, that those audience trust. So that's interesting. You guys are more than just social media interaction. You can do appearances or speaking engagements. Is that yes. Right? So we have um, templates that we've built out to help kind of handhold a brand through it. So if I connect with an athlete as a brand, um, I can decide whether I want to do a social media campaign that could be one post or many posts, a uh, speaking engagement, an appearance or a video shoot or a photo shoot. So we have these um, this wizard that really walks the brands through that process so that they can build out a template that they're confident in. They've addressed all the potential things that they weren't even aware of. And then that athlete or agent on the other side is like, all right, this is what I expect when I get approached from a brand. Uh, and it makes it a lot easier for them because typically they have to coach and teach a new company uh, how to work with their athlete, what their expectations on. And it's a lot of handholding. And if that dollar amount isn't above 20 to 50 grand, it's not even worth the agents or that representative's time. And so we wanted to say, hey, we get that there's a lot of time and effort that can be put into these one-offs. We want to expedite that with scale through our technology so that when you get these, it's just like a quick yes or no. The brand fits, the dates fix, uh, yeah. let's do this or, or we'll move on. Yeah. One of the things you showed me that I thought was so cool is the scheduling feature. So companies can understand like, all right, Denver's in San Francisco to play the Warriors, but they have a day off. So if I want Mason to come out to my pop-up at the food expo or whatever, like he can come. Yeah. I, to me, I, I haven't seen anything um, like that, which is really neat. So let's switch over to the company side. It doesn't matter if I'm, if I'm big, small, if I'm Nikon, if I'm, you know, Michael Jordan, Nissan and Raleigh Durham. Um, and then what is, why is it, um, advantageous for me to be on icon source as a company. Right. Well, I think, um, for one influencer marketing is apparent, like it's, it's mm -hmm. essentially the way, uh, consumers are, are being influenced and brands, uh, are, are investing a lot of dollars in, in that direction. <clears throat> and for our platform, like I said before, you don't have to make any initial investment. So there's no risk involved. It's like, let's be a part of it. Uh, and then most brands can't really name off the top of their head, a lot of the, athletes that could be great to work with. So for example, we have a number of female athletes. So a brand can jump on there and say, I'm just interested in female athletes and maybe my region in North Carolina. Uh, and it's just rare that people off the top of their heads can name who those individuals would be. But with our platform, we can really start uh, getting that those juices flowing. So it's kind of like uh, the anti writers block for marketers. Um, they can just go and say, all right, I never thought about this, but let's launch a campaign uh, in these regions, we'll search athletes based off uh, where their audience is. You can search if you have followers in the Midwest, in California, uh, and what their likes and interests are, and actually build out a pretty thorough argument for your campaign. Uh, and that's all for free. I mean, we don't charge until we've actually built that contract for you and payments come through. Um, and then, you know, from a payment standpoint, all the payment goes through Icon Source. So as an athlete, you don't have to worry about chasing down a new brand that you may not know very well. 
Uh, and then from a brand standpoint, we can ensure that the athletes can execute on that agreement. So um, we really feel like we can help protect both sides to feel comfortable in, in making these first moves. Our, our goal is to really drive new brands into the space. So we want, wanted to address what could be all the, the cautionary issues that, that we needed to overcome for them. Gotcha. So we're getting a lot of interaction on the live feed. Um, I'm going to ask you some of the audience questions and then we'll jump back into uh, the business side of what you're doing. So uh, let's see. We have Dhruv Minushin asks, how do you handle quality control and curating opportunities? Yeah. So um, while our platform is free to join, uh, we have to approve everybody. So it's not allowed for just anybody to jump on there and harass people. Uh, we closely monitor both sides. So we keep the caliber of athletes at a high level while still being able to provide, you know, tier one through tier three athletes. Um, and then from a brand standpoint, we have a team that just does a fair bit of research. We talk, we ask them a, um, some questions that they have to kind of qualify that they're ready to do business. And then, you know, if, if we see, you know, malicious activity, we just remove them. So. Gotcha. Um, Eric Bojan says, I have no idea where to start with putting a contract together to work with an athlete. How does icon source help? Yeah. So uh, I think that's one of the best tools we have is, is our wizard. Um, it really does most of the thinking for you. Uh, you, once you decide what you want to do, a social media campaign, it just walks you through a, a series of questions, kind of like when you do your taxes and it says, you know, what are the date ranges? Is it negotiable? Or do you have a price per post? Uh, how long is this going to be live? Do they have any language they need to use in the, uh, post? And then it actually sends them a contract so that, um, as a, as an athlete or an agent, you feel like you're working with, you know, a really mature sports marketing brand. Another question from Reese Hereford. She says, I'm a female athlete myself. What can I do to support you during this pandemic? Yeah. You know, it's uh, it's an interesting time. I think you got a lot of people that are pretty captivated uh, on their devices. So I think as an athlete, supporting the world is just putting out positive information and, and, and positive messaging. I think it's a pretty cool time to help motivate your following um, and showing them that you're facing the same challenges. So, uh, I think it's an interesting opportunity for brands to connect with athletes that have a pretty captive audience, um, all while being kind of sensitive of the current landscape of what's going on. Gotcha. So let's, let's jump back into the business of, and how, um, you know, how we heard about your background and how you came to be an icon source, but what have been some of the challenges in growing this business and, you know, where do you stand right now? Give us some uh, some understanding, like athletes on the platform, revenue numbers, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I had this idea. Uh, I was at Red Bull for close to seven years. Uh, and it's obviously very intimidating leaving a brand that gives you so much credibility in, in your community. So, um, you know, it, it's a bit of a frightening move, but I was, I was pretty committed and felt compelled and called that, you know, I was the guy to lead this change within the world of sports marketing. Uh, so launched, uh, left Red Bull in August of 2018, um, built the idea around this, kind of the infrastructure. And then it took about 10 months to build the technology to actually have our platform. We have a web platform, an iPhone app and an Android app. Um, launched it and then, you know, decided I'm going to need to raise some money. So um, self-funded, did friends and family. Um, and then the one of the most exciting part is I went to most of the athletes I worked with and they just believed in the, in the need for this system. And they said, Hey, you know, I want to support you. And so almost like 90% of our seed round funding came from athletes, which was wow. uh, exciting for when I'm, I'm approaching people to say, Hey, this isn't just an idea I have. These are people that are living this in real life and, and they, they see the need. So we closed our um, seed round of funding and, in February, which is like insane given the landscape that we're going through now. So pretty thankful for that. Um, and now we're, we're trying to operate pretty lean during this current, current time, but we think we're going to be positioned to hit some revenue goals. Um, yeah. And, and since as far as revenue goes, we went live to the world in September and did about 250 grand in revenue in our first uh, 90 days. 
So wow. we're excited because you got to think to start, you got to go get athletes and then you get them on the platform and then you got to go get brands and then you got to get them to find each other and then do deals and pay those out. So it's typically a delayed cash flow model. Um, so to see the instant excitement kind of proves the model that people were wanting this to be there. There's a need for this in the marketplace. Uh, and the agents have been very receptive. You know, while, while I was at Red Bull, I did deals with almost every sport um, there is. And, and those agents, you know, have trusted me and, and have been great to work with so far. So that's really helped scale our onboarding of athletes. So, you know, I never want people to think of this as an agent workaround space. It's really a tool for agents to expose their athletes to uh, more revenue potential. So, so question from Leela C. She says, who are some of the athletes you work with and you've connected with opportunities? And I just add to that, like how, if I'm a company getting on your platform, how, how much am I browsing through? What's your stable of athletes and is it growing? Yeah. So we have about 500 athletes today. Uh, we grow from about 10 to 20 a week, uh, mm -hmm. just kind of depending. Um, and we have over 40 sport disciplines, so a really wide range uh, that we can offer from Olympics, track and field, swimming, motorsports, action sports, basketball, football, baseball. Um, and, you know, we have a pretty cool search tool. So if you want to look just by geography, you can put in a state, you can put in likes or interests, you can put in, you know, charities or specific things that uh, you maybe want to try to narrow your search pool with to find the right individual um so yeah we have yeah we have about 500 athletes ranging from travis pastrana to your local cycle messenger you know crit athlete so nice very cool um well that also had to be like the ultimate staff stamp of validation when your fundraising came from the athletes that you're finding deals from no oh yeah i mean that's that was the best when we could say you know, not only do these athletes on here, but they've actually funded this platform. So as a brand, you can really trust that this is a, a great place to come and, and find athletes to do business. There's been some people that have attempted something similar in the in the world and they just don't they don't have that authenticity. We try to be very transparent where we're not speaking on behalf of athletes. We're purely a connector uh, trying to make both sides feel like they're extremely prepared and ready to do business by giving them the tools. Awesome. Yeah. To that point, I can just say I've been pitched similar concepts to be onboarded onto platforms. And, and, um, this is the best, this is the only answer that I've really seen that creates that, um, special relationship between brands and athletes. We got a question from, uh, Mikhail Moronofsky. We got some, some people tuning in today. Uh, <laughs> do you get a cut on every deal? Do you upsell for things like contracts and offer other products? Just curious about revenue. Yeah. So right now we don't have any upsell. Um, we, we provide uh, demographic information for all the athletes that are on there to the brands. We provide the contract templates, uh, the payment, and, and none of that changes. It's just a percentage fee uh, of your deal that goes through. So, um, yeah. Awesome. So one of the things we ask all our founders to do is share some advice that you would have for other entrepreneurs small business owners, people who are, um, you know, trying to, trying to build something of their own. So if, if you could just yeah. look at the camera and share with them, uh, some experience, some advice, um, some wisdom, we'd appreciate that. Yeah. I, I think the biggest thing is, uh, if you have an idea that you're confident about, be willing to just bet on yourself. Uh, I think anytime you're reliant on an organization to make moves for you and, and to promote you to your dream career, that can be difficult, uh, but if you feel very passionate about an idea, <clears throat> I've always really liked on betting on myself, on knowing I can work harder than the next guy. And then I think the next thing is surround yourself by people that really complement your uh, weaknesses because <clears throat> it's really easy to surround ourselves with people that complement our strengths because you typically get along well. Um, but I feel like one of the keys to our success is I've got a team around me that uh, is amazing and they've, they complement me from a technology standpoint, from an organization standpoint. Uh, and that way I can really focus on what I'm good at. And, and I think those are probably the two, two biggest things. And every time it's frightening, uh, just go back to your voting on yourself and, and you're betting your money on, on your work ethic. So. Awesome. Well, Chase, man, we appreciate you coming on here. I'm, I'm on the platform. I'm happy to be on there. And as an athlete, I just want to say thank you for what you're doing for 
uh, the industry. And uh, I know I speak for a couple people when I say that. Awesome, man. Appreciate having me on. Cool. Thanks, Chase. All right. Cheers.